It's time to talk about this hole. Attach the ICF to the concrete slab. All right, friends, I had to slow down, think about this a little bit. I have some vent pipes I have to extend up that go through the concrete wall. So I want to get those in place. A two inch vent down here that I have to extend up. Two three inch vent pipes that will extend to the outside. So let's get started on taking care of these vents. How well did I do? Morning friends, it's a new day. I'm confident there's gonna be no more expansion of the spray foam, so now it's time to take these blocks off. All right friends, the next step is to peel off all of these little square nubs. I want a flat surface and my design height is 30 inches to this line right here. I don't like all these little nooks and crannies in here where some little bug could make a home out of it. I want it flat and I want it clean. Boy, it's making one heck of a mess. Good old shop vac will take care of it. All right, friends, it's time to put the last course of rebar in, so let's get started. friends this morning I thought I'd get started on uh, putting together a door buck so here we go so there we have it a simple door buck All right, friends, I just now trimmed out the bottom of the ICF where it meets with the concrete slab. And the reason I'm using the tape is we're going to attach the ICF to the concrete slab. And as I learned when I did the root cellar, that spray foam really makes a mess. And I don't want a, a large mess to clean up. I, I am so that's the reason for the tape. It'll help me clean up a lot quicker. All right, friends, it's time to talk about this hole before I cover it up with the blue tape. This hole is for an attachment point. And typically it's not used in basement walls because when you're below grade, it's definitely not needed. But when you're above grade, you may want to use this option for your project. So the corner ICFs only have one attachment point, and that's this section right here. Now, when you're putting either cultured stone and you're putting your mesh material on, you need to fasten it 
you're putting steel siding on or even wood siding, you have plenty of attachment points on your straight ICFs every six inches. But on the corner, you've, you have nothing here. So the reason for this hole is take a three quarter PVC and you stick it down in there and that creates an attachment point. So any kind of molding, if you're putting on siding and you're finishing off your corners with some molding, it gives you an anchor point to fasten to. Like I said, below grade, you're not gonna need this. Above grade, this is where you want to use this. I'm gonna put cultured rock on the side, uh, but no matter what, I'm gonna put the three quarter inch conduit in all four corners, giving me that option uh, of an attachment point. So it's either for wood, you may want to use it for steel siding. So it gives you more options. So on my project, I'm going to be putting one of these in, in each of the corners. So let's get started doing that. I know that I'm going to be putting tough coat material, protective material on here. So I want this actually to be one eighth of an inch below my styrofoam. That way the tough coat has a good place to bond. All right, friends, we just finished putting the three quarter inch conduit in the corner pieces of the ICFs for the above grade corner pieces. And that gives me the option of a continuous attachment point on both sides of the ICF corner. So now that that's done, I'm going to trim out the top with the blue tape. The reason I'm trimming out the top of the blue tape, I use a material called Tough Coat 2, and it's a, an acrylic base ICF protection that gives a hard turtle shell and ultraviolet light protection against uh, any damage to the ICF. So the reason I'm using that is because the center core here is six inches, and naturally it's gonna be filled with concrete. Some of it's gonna spill over and end up on here. And from my experience, the concrete will chip and break and flake off of the ICF. Whereas that Tough Coat 2, it is a sticky, pliable material, gets in all the nooks and crannies, and it likes to stick to the styrofoam. So that's the reason for the blue tape on the top. So let's trim out the whole perimeter with the blue tape. Right now I'm gonna go every one foot, I'm gonna put a shim in there and just get it close. And then I'll run around with the level and, and uh, square and, and check it and adjust it as needed. All right, that's it for the wall. It's plumb all the way around. All right, friends, now it's time to tie in all this inside bracing and tie it all together in one big rigid structure. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna put some blocks on the wall because I'm getting ready to do my first pass on tacking the ICFs. Tacking the ICFs to the concrete floor. I want to get the blocks on there to hold it down to prevent any uplift. All right, we're ready for the spray foam. So at this point, I feel confident to take the blocks off. All 
All right, friends, we are now ready to do the concrete pour. I've called the batch plant and we're scheduled to do the pour at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Once again, this is Steve from Pure Michigan Living. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.